Hey, hey, Emeril Lagasse here. Welcome to Emeril Live. I'm back here in the awesome new Food Network kitchen getting some terrific pastries together for our studio audience. Hey, today, I'm using a very special pastry dough that's so easy to make and so versatile to use. I decided to do a whole show on it. Now, it's called pate choux, or choux paste, but most of you know it as cream puff or eclairs, right? But it doesn't just make cream puffs. Hey, mix in a little cheese and you go down another road. Hey, Nick, hey, Sal, how you doing? Hey, you guys hello. ready to go? We're yeah. ready. So tonight, it's a sweet and savory pair of shoes right here on Emerald Live. Welcome. Unbelievable new kitchen back there. What do you think of the new digs, huh? Yeah. yeah, that's right. We're making pastry tonight, but first, give it up, Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> this is your kind of show tonight. Oh, you know it is. This is your kind of show tonight. You know, people are confused shoe paste or patty shoe. It's basically, you know, you make eclairs, you make cream puffs make a big classical thing later on we're gonna call well let me tell you what's on the menu all right let me show you this tonight doc and all of you at home here's what we're gonna do we're gonna start by making and showing you a very basic patty shoe dough and then we're gonna make them into a little mini eclairs then chocolate profiteroles with pistachio ice cream oh. And then a really incredible dish, herb and blue cheese, croquembouche. Croquembouche. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let me show you how easy this is. I'm starting with a little bit of water. You could use milk. For this step here, we're going to use a little water. And in the water, we're going to add some butter. And we want to get that butter melted real nice. So this is actually the shoe paste that we're making. Little sugar, pinch of salt. All right. Now, while this is sort of melting, we're gonna talk about a couple of other ingredients. Almost like making a roux when you do this, the shoe paste. It's very, it doesn't have to be very complicated. While that's melting, the next ingredient to put this thing together is just some basic flour. So the flour goes in the butter and water, salt, sugar mixture, and we mix it in there and it starts to make this dough coming off the sides. But it's not happy yet. That's where we come in here on Emerald Live. <laughs> we make it a little happier. And uh, what we're gonna do to make it happier is you gotta have eggs to put it all together. So for this particular shoe paste, we're going to add four eggs, and you do that one at a time. Oh, hi. <laughs> All right, now I'll show you how simple this is. The uh, mixture is together. The butter's melted. As I said now, what we're going to do is we're going to add the flour. And I'm using just all-purpose flour. Like it's just like making a roux. You see, and we get it together and we mix it and it starts to come just like a little ball like this. And you keep stirring it, you keep stirring it. See how it's coming off the sides like that? Buck, I hope you're getting a shot of that. <laughs> and it's coming off the sides and it's coming off the sides and it is 
done, except for the eggs. Now, you let this cool a few minutes because, you know, it's the egg and the hot thing, and, you know, God knows we got the heat police around here somewhere. <laughs> the basic now, what we're going to do is we add this mixture into, because it's cool right now. You see how cool that is? It's, it's, it's about frigid. So 140 degrees, we're going to put that down in there. And now we're going to turn our machine slowly, one egg at a time. So we add the first egg in there. And then we add the second. Meanwhile, what we want to do is we want to get our oven in position here. So we want to get the temperature on right now about 375 degrees. Once the eggs are incorporated, there you have it. We've got patty shoe or shoe paste. And now you're ready to make eclairs. You're ready to make cream puffs, whatever you're going to make. Get it all incorporated. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to take that shoe paste and turn it into chocolate eclairs. Stay with me. Doc Gibbs, the Man. everybody having a few pastry pointers tonight and we have uh, started with patty shoe this is what the dough when the eggs get in there should uh, should look like it's a little uh, not quite fully stiff it's still a little sticky and uh, it should be you want to scrape that down put that in your pastry brush pastry bag I'm using a uh, just a no tip is what it's called zero tip call it whatever you want <laughs> then basically, since we're doing these uh, mini eclairs, we uh, put the shoe paste inside of the bag. And uh, the technique of doing these, again, we're doing a mini, is we want to press the bag out, and then we stop, and then you want to just sort of take the point and stop it like that. The great thing about doing these mini eclairs so now we have two there. You want to get maybe an inch apart. Now, if we were doing cream puffs, obviously we, we'd be doing them round. We could do even minier eclairs, or we could do larger ones. What I find by doing this little press at the end sort of stops, because with this particular dough, what really makes this thing happen is... Uh, it has a lot of moisture in it, believe it or not. And so as this bakes, we're going to start this at 375 degrees for about 12 minutes. The thing with eclairs is that what people have the problem with is that they make the eclairs, they don't really think about sort of this air in there, which is a very common pastry thing. Put it inside of the oven, and then they go play with the oven every couple of minutes, you know. <laughs> you know. Nosy wozy, you know. <laughs> and then, like, the air ain't doing what it's doing. So you want to leave it in here for about 12 minutes. Then what I do, because the secret of this patty shoe or eclairs, is you got to dry it out so that moisture's not trapped inside. If the moisture gets trapped inside and you take them out a little bit too soon and there's still moisture in there, they collapse instead of staying nice and poofy, Okay. So what I do after 12 minutes, I jack the oven up to about 425 for the rest of the time until they're nice golden brown and they look like this, okay? You see, they're not, they're really, really light. And, you know, don't be afraid if you're doing this at home so you can get a little feel. That's what it is when you're working with pastry and cakes and cookies. You got to get a little feel and pie crust, you know? 
It's not just so, it's already regimented because it's a formula. See, when you cook, you cook with recipes. You can add more wine, throw in a little more pork fat. You can't do that with pastries because then it don't work, all right? Speaking about pastries, let's check in with the awesome Food Network kitchen back there because I hope, uh, Sal, Nikki. Hey. Hi. Uh, I hope you guys have got a, uh, enough eclairs working back there because we, we got a we got a hungry audience out here. <laughs> hey Sal. Hey yeah, bud. Is that is that the chocolate topping right there? This is it. Nice. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to make that right now for these folks. All right. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. We got the eclairs. Let's talk about what we want to fill them with. We could fill them with, uh, have a nice pastry cream. That works, you know, you could do it on the stove and flavor it the way that you want. And then uh, sometimes, at least the old days, you just fill them with whipped cream. Just good old whipped cream, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do is I got little cream and I got a little sugar. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start. Whoa, whoa, slow down, Charlie. See this new, it's got, I got this new thing here, Doc. It's, it's got a plus and minus thing. Wow. Have you ever seen those? So, no. like, as an example, I'm hitting the month. Buck, can you get a shot of this, please? This is, this is history in the making here. <laughs> now, how many people have one of these plus and minus gadget things like that, okay? See, look, Buck, see the minus here? If I hit this with a little minus, see how it slows down? Wow, nice. You may want to bring this home with you later, you know what I mean? Uh, try, uh, try it out and then you can just look. Press it up, look. This thing is going now like, I could go right across the Hudson in this thing. Now you don't want to over whip the cream, although you, you want it pretty stiff. Whoa. This is unbelievable. All right. You guys aren't getting one of these for Christmas. <laughs> okay, then it's off. So now we got whipped cream. I'm not making this stuff up. Look, look at this. It actually has a speedometer. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> so now I'll show you the little trick about the whipped cream. We're going to fill our little pastry bag here with the whipped cream. Sometimes I like to put a little vanilla in there. I like that vanilla, that vanilla taste. See, and then I just sort of put it inside of this bag. And then uh, we want to turn the bag over. And sometimes when I'm filling it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> Trying to do a little educational class here, you know. Rotor's got to come. <laughs> what you want to do, you can either just sort of use the tip and then you can just sort of squeeze it and you can fill it that way. Or you can get a little knife, okay? Oh. <laughs> Chocolate. Chocolate, corn syrup, cocoa. We're going to mix all of that up for the topping when we come back. Another nut! patty shoe. Now we've got all the little mini eclairs filled with the uh, whipped cream. Mm -hmm -hmm. <laughs> then I told you we're going to have that, uh, as you saw, Sal in the kitchen. We've got a little melted chocolate. Then in this bowl right here, I'm going to add a little bit of rum. 
that little flavor. And then I have a little cocoa powder. And then what we're going to do is um, I have a little white corn syrup in here. And we're going to add that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to whisk this together. While that's happening, we're going to take a little bit of butter and put that right to our chocolate, which is going to give it, you'll see, a little sheen and uh, a little richness to that. Oh, yeah, baby. All right, so we've got the butter working. It's kind of like making a ganache. It's really what it is. You can ganache cakes, cupcakes. Once that butter gets all incorporated in there, see how it's gotten shiny? It's got a little bit more structure to it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and work in that. <laughs> and then we're going to add this right to that. Oh, yeah, and then we're, we're in business. Now, once this gets all incorporated like that, that's basically the, the top frosting, if you will, for the eclairs. Now, how do I put this on? How do I incorporate this? Do I, do I put it in a bag? Do I spoon it over it? Well, let's try it. First, we'll try the spoon. So you could take a little bit of this chocolate mixture and just sort of do that to it. Nice, neat, happy, happy. You know, it looks pretty happy. And uh, the other way you can do it is just take your eclair like this and dip it. Yeah. See, and you do this dip thing. So that looks pretty good. Then, you, you know, the hands start getting all nice. Hey, uh, hey, guys in the back there, how's your, how's your project coming along with the eclairs? Oh, uh, we're looking good. Are you, uh, are you ready to come out for the studio audience? Yeah, we're getting we're ready. ready. Well, come on out. Anytime. Come on. We're ready on you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. So we're going to go back to the spooning mission here for a minute. See how that's going while uh, the guys are working this up right here. You guys look like prime mini eclair <laughs> participants. So uh, go ahead, don't be shy. It, if anything, it's just gonna go <laughs> like that. Just, you know. Oh. Hey, hey, hey! Sal and Nikki, got the eclairs in the house. Fuck yourself. Don't give them any more, Sal. I've got too many. All right, so we've got a little eclair action going on, thanks to the kitchen staff back there. The yeah. new, brand new kitchen staff. Yeah. yeah. All right, listen, we're gonna have a little fun here, passing out some eclairs to the old uh, studio audience. Is everybody happy, happy? So. Before you get too full, let's just sort of recap a minute here. Very simple, right? A shoe paste. We did water, we had butter, we had salt, sugar. We added the flour, we made a dough, we put it on the mixer. Four eggs, slowly in there. Now, in the beginning, it's gonna look like, oh, it's loose. <laughs> and it'll come together. We put it in the bag, we piped it out. Then we had the oven on 375 degrees first, 12 minutes. Jacked it up to 425 to dry them out. That's the key, right? To dry them out. They're dry. We made whipped cream. We stuffed them. We made this sort of rum chocolate. We stuffed them again. <laughs> then we added the rum chocolate like this to just have a little topping like that for the mini eclairs, right? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, when we come back, I'm going to show you what else you can do, especially savory. Stick around. Stop this! <laughs>
Biasi here. Thanks for joining us here. It's pastry pointers tonight, but we're really doing a whole show on patty shoe, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Can we zero in on the kitchen? Sal, I just want to thank you guys. I think uh, the overall experience of the eclairs was uh, a 10. A 10. <laughs> Good. All right. Now I'm going to make some cream puffs, but to uh, just twist it up a little bit, I'm going to uh, make them chocolate cream puffs. Very, very simple. So, again, here's that technique again. Those of you at home with those pads and pencils, we got water, again, that we're using, and we want to get the butter in there so we can start melting the butter. Obviously, if the butter is at room temperature, the better. Then we want to add a little sugar. And we're going to add a little pinch of salt. Now, here's where it comes in. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some cocoa powder to this and get that cocoa powder just sort of mixed in to the water, making sure that we get as, uh, as much lumps as we can out of here. And then, of course, when the butter uh, is empty, is melted in there. Then we're going to add the flour like before. Set up the mixer like we did and our four eggs. Now, those of you at home, here it goes again. Almost like an instant replay. <laughs> we're going to add the flour and now still on the heat, we're just going to kind of mix this into that sort of roux thing, if you will. You can see it coming together. Starting to come off the sides now. Just keep, keep it on the heat. Keep mixing it. You can see how it changes in consistency right there. And then we let this thing cool. And again, four eggs one at a time forms the batter. And we have it in the bag. Are you guys with me there? Yeah. All right. Now, for cream puffs, what we're going to do is just that. We're going to make sort of a little puff, and then we're just going to dot it like that. And another little puff like this. Perfect. And we keep doing that. Same temperature, 375. We're going to get it in there. This time it could be more like 10 minutes, okay? 10 to 12 minutes. Then we're going to put the oven up. And again, we want to try to dry these out as much as we can inside of the oven. Now, you ever go to a little uh, French restaurant or you've been somewhere and see this magical dessert on there called profiteroles, right? Well, that's basically what cream puffs are. So what we did, we made some cream puffs. You can see how beautiful they are. Very light. They're dry. I say in earlier, if you're unsure until you get that little touch before you take the whole pan out of the oven, you can just get one. And you can sort of break it in half, whether it's an eclair or a cream puff, and you'll see if there's still a lot of moisture left in there. If there is, then put them back in for a couple of more minutes. Now, I thought it would be great to serve with our chocolate profiteroles would be to make a little pistachio ice cream. Oh, oh yeah, baby. So in a saucepan, I uh, want to bring some milk up to uh, scalding, just about where it's going to start simmering. And uh, look, you know, when you're working on the stove with butter, with milk, with cream, be very careful. Keep an eye on it. Don't go disappearing. Because uh, if it spills over, you're going to be renovating your house. <laughs> so that's why the fireman and I we're like this. <laughs> Just like that, you see? <laughs> Once this milk starts coming up, now I want to sweeten it with some sugar because I want to dissolve the milk in there. And earlier I said about vanilla. I just love vanilla. This happens to be a vanilla bean. Okay? Oh. Wow. Now, what a lot of people don't know is you have to split this bean. This is actually a pod. 
We've got to split it in half like I'm doing here. Because what a lot of people don't know is where all the vanilla flavor is, is right inside of this pod. You see that? That's all where the vanilla is right there. So now I want to get it happy and I want to put this right inside of there. Now, vanilla beans are pretty expensive stuff. <coughs> so I go for whenever I can get the bang for the buck is when I'm going to... Uh, so what I do, after I'm done with this, I'm obviously not going to use that pod in the ice cream. You know, it'd kind of be a little difficult chewing on that, wouldn't you think, you know? Oh, yeah, you could floss at the same time, maybe, if you, you know, you know, if you wanted to leave it in. So basically what I do is uh, I take it out, I just dry it, let it dry. And then what I do is I make vanilla sugar. I take the vanilla bean and I put it in my little canister of sugar. And then it gets like the, all of this vanilla, you know, thing. And then if you ever uh, want to use it, uh, basically you can use about, um, if a recipe calls for like a quarter to a half a teaspoon of vanilla, you could use about three teaspoons of your vanilla sugar and get the same impact. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Only on Emerald Live. All right, now. Now the milk is scalded, what I need to do is I've got to temper these eggs. So I add a little bit of that in there. And then what I want to do is I want to whisk the egg yolks now with a little bit of the milk. This is tempering it, so it's coming up to temperature. Before I add this mixture to this mixture here, whoa! Now it's like making a custard, okay? Rhoda, quit rushing me. <laughs> I'm making ice cream here, okay? <laughs> Thank you. I can see it now, a new show coming up, Road Alive. <laughs> Road Alive! <laughs> see, those of you who have been watching for a few years, well, I'm not gonna go there, Rhoda, right now. <laughs> so, now, we got this tempered. I always still like to strain it. I strain it just in case any eggs, okay? See, there's that vanilla stuff. We're going to save that for later on. Okay, now, basically, we've got to let this cool. You can put a little pistachio extract in here, a little bit of chopped pistachios, but you've got to let it cool. And then what I like to do even more so is I like to refrigerate my ice cream base first. Get it really good and cold. You see that? And I got a little plastic wrap on there because I don't want to have one of those skin things or whatever they call them form on top. You know what I mean. You know, you get that thick thing on there. It's, oh. Now, I take my ice cream base pistachio inside of my ice cream maker based on your manufacturer's suggestions as far as freezing. I have my bowl cold. I'm going to start churning the ice cream. When we come back, I'm going to show you pistachio profiteroles. Stay with me. Right here. cooking up a little patty shoe tonight, which would be cream puffs and eclairs. And now, uh, again, you have to check with your manufacturer's uh, suggested time thing, because all these machines are different. And uh, one of the things that uh, if you have one of these sort of evolving ice cream makers as opposed to the hand crank that you can't really see, and I've been there many, many times where you keep cranking and all of a sudden it's like frozen. <laughs> what do you do, you know? Get the torch out. 
But if you have one of these that goes around and around, when it starts coming off the bowl, you also don't want to be sure not to overfreeze this. So when it gets pretty soft, what I do is I stop churning it, put it in my very clean, sterilized sort of container, and put it in the freezer and let it hard freeze inside of the freezer. So that's what we got there. I'll stop that for a second. And then I'll show you exactly now this famous dessert sort of Dun Emerald style called profiteroles. I like using these kind of containers. You know, they wash well, they wear well, they're inexpensive, they really do the job. So I get my hot pistachio ice cream. And then what I do here is, first of all, you know, the profiterole is generally, the order is generally three profiteroles. I don't know where they got three, but anyhow. So, we cut them in half. See, perfectly air dry in there. Now, if you're having trouble kind of cutting your profiterole, you see that? I came, came into an air spot. No problem. That's why they make this knife right here. The one that you don't know what to do with in your block. The one with the teeth. It's a serrated knife. And this is perfect for jobs like this. You get that little serrated knife like that. Good for bread, croutons. So, let's find the bottoms here. What we do is we sort of get the profiteroles like this. And then we get a little scoop. Get our delicious pistachio ice cream. And we do a little shot like that. And then we'll do a little shot like that. And a little shot like that and press it in there. Then generally you do a little topping. But before I do that, it's just me, you know. Before I do that. Oh, yeah, baby. I like to just go in there and get that chocolate sauce and just kind of make them a little happy. See, and it just kind of makes the profiterole down there a little happy too. And then, then I come over here with the top, put the top on here. And then, for me, you can just never get enough of that pistachio ice cream. So I just kind of go in and get another little piece like this, kind of put it in the center, okay? Then, then I just kind of get the uh, pistachio ice cream like that. I mean, if you're going to be that happy, bam, bam! So there you have it, a little profiteroles, ladies and gentlemen, okay? With pistachio ice cream. Now, let me tell you about this thing, this next dish called a croquembouche. Oh, yeah. Well, they mostly used in a very sweet way. A lot of wedding, bachelor kind of cakes, anniversaries, et cetera, et cetera. So we took the idea of that. And then they have all that burnt caramel on top and then stuffed with cream. And oh, yeah, baby. So I was thinking about doing one like in a savory fashion. So what I did is make a patty shoe, just like we were doing. Put the butter, salt, sugar. This time I added a little thyme. Okay, then I add the flour in there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It came all together. Then inside of that, the four eggs, they're waiting. So now I've got sort of the savory sort of patty shoe now, flavored with a little thyme. Okay, so same thing. Put your oven 375, goes in here. We're going to make little cream puffs like this, but this time they're savory. Okay. Let me give you another trick. That same patty shoe, if you were to put right at the end, fold a little bit of cheese, grated cheese in there, and pipe them out like that, like a cream puff, you'd have a savory thing called a gougere, which is one of my favorite. They don't come up quite as puffy because the density of the cheese, but boy, do they make a great appetizer. And you can go on that www.foodnetwork.com. We'll give you the recipes if you come on the Emerald page. Now, while these savory 
cream puffs, while the savory cream puffs are cooking, I'm going to take beautiful blue cheese or Roquefort cheese with a little cream cheese and a little heavy cream and make a little filling. When we come back, I'll show you this incredible savory croak and boost. Stay with me. Really right there. Not good. Tonight, mostly in Patty's shoe. Folks, let me tell you what's been going on in the commercial break, okay? We, uh, we baked those savory little thyme cream puffs. And during the break, I took one of my favorite combinations. Took some port wine, put it in a sauce pot, little poof, alcohol burned out, okay? Then I added a little sugar to this. There's a reason for my madness here, beside being Portuguese. <laughs> now... Blue cheese, I told you earlier, cream cheese. Whenever you're working with cream cheese, make sure it's at room temperature. Like if you're gonna do a cheesecake, make sure it's at room temperature. It'll eliminate all of those little dots that you're gonna get. Now, oh boy. <laughs> See, it really does have a speedometer here. So what we wanna do is we're gonna slowly mix this all together. The blue cheese, the cream cheese, as low as you can. We're on about one mile per hour. <laughs> all right, we're on two now. So you want to get this really nice, all, oh boy. Want to get it all nice, nice, nice. All right, that's it. So you get the point, nice and smooth. So that's happening there. You know what, people just think that all you can do is bake patty shoe too, you know that? Not true. Sometimes what I do, Remember I was telling you about that cheese where I put different herbs in here? I get a little fryer, just kind of do a little of that or a little of this. Oh, yeah, babe. Yeah, these are like, they're like little worms. No, you know, I mean the, the shape. But these make a little terrific little hors d'oeuvre, too. I'm going to show you in a second. So we'll fry them. And then like anything, you know, you got to sort of flip it around once it starts going a little bit, which we'll come back and do. Going back now to the savory croquembouche. Oh, what a name. <laughs> what are you driving today, man? Oh, I got a croquembouche outside. <laughs> so, <laughs> you had to be there, Doc. I'm there. So now I take this... Uh, mixture of the blue cheese and, the, and I just fill these up now and now it's going to be the excitement of putting this all together these are all filled with that blue cheese cream cheese mixture now here's what you can do you can sort of you know let's flip these real quick come on baby come on see that they make a great little hors d'oeuvre you flip them over like this patty shoe okay so like anything else, when it's fried, make sure you season it when it comes out. For this, I'm just going to use a little cinnamon and sugar. Oh, yeah, babe. Yeah. The breakfast of champions. Yeah. Now, what I was saying is that you can take honey, and you can do like we did with the chocolate thing. And I, But it's like, come on, we ain't got a lot of time on our hands here. So look, what's a little honey amongst friends, right? Put the honey in here like that. Then you take the nuts, sprinkle the nuts over them like this. All right? I think we ought to have the awesome kitchen staff come out one more time. What do you guys think, huh? Oh. 
How about this? So basically, basically what you got here, folks, is this croquembouche. You start doing this little pyramid like this of all the cream puffs. You see that? Stuff with the, uh, oh, with the blue cheese and the, all of that, right? Keep stacking it up. And then uh, the whole reason of why that I was telling you earlier, they kind of get sticky because of the honey. You know, they kind of stay together like this. What a beautiful little hors d'oeuvre. Now, here's what I like to do. If you think about, we got the savory patty shoe, and we've got it stuffed with this blue cheese, sort of cream cheese mixture. Nothing goes better than this syrup. So what I do is take the port wine syrup just right at the end, and I just kind of do a little, just a little of that sort of port wine syrup thing right over here for our croquembouche filled. There you have it, a little croquembouche right there, huh? Fantastic. Oh, yeah. So hopefully you all know now a little bit more about patty shoe or shoe case. And you know what? Hey, I want to thanks for joining me tonight. I want to thank the awesome kitchen staff. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you next time.